those holes in the knees get a little bit drafty. Today I'm sharing my winter capsule wardrobe, a lookbook of outfit ideas and all the key pieces I would recommend you have in your capsule closet. Now I've said it before, but the process of making a capsule wardrobe is so therapeutic. Tidy wardrobe, tidy mind. Now although I do this decluttering and organizing of my capsule wardrobe every single season, I do also buy an unusually high amount of fashion because of my job, and then also certain brands send me pieces. So my rail can get out of hand pretty quickly, which is kind of where I've got to now. So I thought you might enjoy seeing the process of what I consider to be the key pieces for 2020 and how I would break that down into being the perfect capsule wardrobe for autumn winter. Also, just to let you know, a portion of this video has very kindly been sponsored by Pantene with their new hair biology range. I have honestly never had quite so many compliments as I've had in the last month about my hair. So a little bit later in this video, I will be sharing with you what I've been doing to it, what I've been using on my hair that's made it look and feel so much healthier. Right. Let's attack the rail. The worst thing about decluttering is starting. <laughs> Once you've started and you're on a roll, you're fine. Right, let me start with winter coats because it's probably the most appropriate item of clothing we need in our wardrobe once it gets cold. Now I've mentioned it before, but having a really nice camel coat in your capsule wardrobe for autumn winter is priceless. Trench coats are again hugely on trend for this autumn winter, but then also going for it in camel fits in nicely with the neutral trend. So that is going on my rail. And on that train of thought with the neutral vibe, I'm going to include my beige wool coat that I got from Reese. Now as warm winter coats pretty much go hand in hand with the British winter, I am gonna allow myself to have three on the rail, along with some jackets, which I'll show you in a moment. Now there is this weird snobbery when it comes to capsule wardrobes and it really annoys me. In fact, I just hate any kind of fashion snobbery. But some would say a capsule wardrobe is meant to be 30 or 40 pieces. And in all honesty, there is no law that says it has to be 30 pieces. It's just a number that people have come up with. If you go through your wardrobe and you're left with 70 pieces and that that's what you will truly wear day in day out through winter then fine go with 70 pieces or 80 pieces whatever makes you happy the idea and joy of it for me is to condense down this completely overstuffed rail into an edited organized and beautiful collection of clothes that I know will see me through winter 2020. So the third winter coat I will add in is this navy one, which I got from the Clay Collection at Debenhams, because I really like that. I'm sorry, the light is just messing up in this, and I don't actually believe everybody needs three wool winter coats in their capsule wardrobe. That's just personally what I tend to use an awful lot of. I reach for these to just dress up an outfit and make it look a bit smarter. Now I just wanna quickly show you these new ankle boots I've just got in, because I would wear them actually with the navy coat instead of the blazer, so they were kindly sent from a brand called Fairfax and Favour. Uh, it arrives in a really beautiful box actually. Both shoes are beautifully wrapped in a dust bag each. So these are the actual ankle boots I chose. And the nice thing for me is a bit of a change for autumn winter is I've got a bit of extra height because I've been wearing, I don't know where they are, but I've been wearing my black western boots an awful lot even through summer. But it was definitely time for something a little bit different and I fancied a bit of height. So while I'm sat down, let me just quickly tell you about my hair and these amazing products I've been using, which I think really is the key to why it's suddenly looking so much healthier and really nourished. So the range from Pantene that I've been using is called Hair Biology. It's a luxury new range without any insane price tags. Now they kindly sent me this box of goodies about a month ago and I've been using them religiously every time I wash my hair. So in the hair biology range, they've done special formulations, one depending on the condition of your hair, but two what you're trying to achieve. So you've got gray and glowing, defrizz and illuminate, full and vibrant, which is what I went for, and cleanse and reconstruct. So like I mentioned, I went for full and vibrant because although my hair looks really thick, hairdressers always describe it as quite fine, but there's lots of it and it's definitely getting thinner over the years. And of course, I do also have my hair highlighted and I have done for ooh, lots of years. Shall we just leave it at that? Lots of years I've been highlighting it. So inevitably, I have got damage from that and it is pretty fine as well. My hair feels like it's finally turned a corner from the really bad damage I had that started about two years ago. I'd had a particularly stressful time and the result of that was one, I turned into a big spotty mess. And the other weird thing of that stress was that my hair became so brittle, 
really fine and the damage to it was really obvious. I thought I was sort of resembling a bit of worse of gum edge. It was so, so dry. So anyway, I'm digressing with a very long story there. Long and short of it is these products have massively, massively helped the condition of my hair. It's feeling smooth and so much healthier. And like the name suggests, much fuller and vibrant, which is absolutely what I wanted and it needed. Now, the one thing I've actually done differently this week to really give it a boost and I was becoming slightly obsessed with it is the rejuvenating mask I've been using again from the same range. Now I probably use this way more than you're meant to but I just love the feeling of my hair afterwards. So I would genuinely recommend these hair products and the best advice I can give is at the end of this video do pop over to their website have a look at their collection and have a read of all the information and the science behind it but in my personal experience they have worked wonders on my own hair. So let's get back to it and start making that rail look a bit tidier. Obviously the other thing that is definitely practical right now, being practical for once in my life, is jumpers and cardigans. So let's have a little edit on that section. And I'm gonna break it down even further into chunky knits and lightweight knits because there's definitely a case for needing a selection of both. So chunky knits, I'm keeping my navy one I got from COS. Let's put that one out. Don't need two baby blues as much as I like them. I do really like that uh, in the pink. That is gonna go. Uh, Walter told me recently that it's horrible. <laughs> so I'm gonna donate that. Black cotton cardigan that I got from Everlane is gonna go on. I might take that one off actually for a minute. I like to keep checking the color palette of the capsule wardrobe I'm creating along the way to just double check that all those tones go together nicely so they're going to get lots of wear. I do still wear this a lot, <laughs> but I'm gonna fold it in some of my drawers upstairs rather than having it on the rail. As chic as I think it is, probably not something I would wear for a meeting. Definitely keeping my Accru Cezanne cardigan on the rail because I just love that, I've worn it loads. I think that one's looking really tired now. So still on fine knits and I know I've got a couple of cardigans going on, but these two particularly from Cezanne, uh, which are the Gaspard, double up as a jumper or as cardigans. So as you can see, color-wise, I've got lots of neutrals that blend really nicely together which is just how I like it. Cashmere crew next, I think I'm gonna put a charcoal gray in. This one is loungewear, so it's going in my drawer, so it doesn't quite count as my capsule wardrobe. I think that then, although, although I like it, is probably surplus to requirements. So underneath all my jumpers and my cardigans, I've then got a selection of shirts, blouses, and camisole tops. Now where in summer and late autumn, I would have a good selection of different t-shirts I would integrate into those outfits. In winter, they often get swapped out in favor of longer sleeve options, or often these crew necks, which I tend to reach for a lot. I would highly recommend you have at least one beautiful Breton top in your capsule wardrobe in all seasons actually, not just winter, because I do find that invaluable when I'm creating outfits on a more day-to-day -day basis. I'm just gonna put one camisole top in for now. Although I am a big fan of them, I think in winter it's not exactly the warmest thing in the world, but if we're ever allowed to go out again and see friends for drinks at Christmas, that's the sort of thing I'd wear underneath a blazer. So I'm gonna keep that one in, in the hope that I'll be allowed to socialize with my friends at some point. That one was a great bite from Mango. Um, it's a bit fine for winter, but I really like the shape. I'm gonna put it in. My striped option, I am going to say yes. I really like. That is no, yes, no. Ooh, that was nice and quick. Speeding through blouses there. White cotton poplin shirt, always a winner. I love that. Obviously leather is one of the huge trends for this autumn winter. So I'm gonna keep my leather trousers in my capsule wardrobe, debating the skirt as well. The reason I'm hesitating is because just naturally when I get dressed, I don't seem to ever reach for a skirt. I don't really like skirts, I don't wear them very much, but I do like the shape of this one. So I'm gonna put that one in now and hope that I reach for it a bit more often than I have done already. So onto trousers, and before I tackle this denim section that has got a bit out of hand, 
I just want to show you these quickly. These are a pair of trousers that I got from H&M. I believe they are under £20 and they are sustainable as well because they've been made from tensile. Now they are quite lightweight but I love the fit of these trousers and the colour so much. I think I can make it work with what I've got on my rail. So if I pair them with say a chunky knit that's obviously going to keep me warmer. I love those two tones together. I would equally put it with beige. I think that works nicely and I quite like it colour blocked. The black is possibly a little bit too harsh again it but I do really like that pastel pink so that's a good test really if you're debating keeping something in your own capsule wardrobe just hold a few pieces up in the mirror and just see if those tones work together or even try them on and take some selfies that you can look at later I wouldn't consider white wool trousers an essential for a winter capsule wardrobe but I personally do find already that these have become invaluable They make me feel luxe and elevated and super polished. I've talked a lot about winter whites in my videos recently, but equally, if you didn't want to do a color block of white, which is my favorite, they're also going to go with pretty much every single top, cardigan, and jumper that's on the rail. So that's the sign of a good piece. Now I'm going to keep both of these needle cord trousers in my capsule wardrobe for winter because one is a pair of flares, the other one are a straight leg and I like the fact that these convince me to get out of jeans occasionally so I'm going to put both of them in. So talk of the devil, let me get on to my denim section which has got out of hand. As I lost them for a while and they now feel like an awful see again, I'm going to keep my black skinnies in that I got from Suzanne and I might put the blue version to one side for this season because I'm definitely going to sort blue elsewhere. These ones from Evelyn have not been getting quite as much use as some of their other pairs, so I've put those out. I've got rid of one pair, that's a, a start. They are my favourite from Evelyn, which are the straight leg, lighter wash, I shall link it in the description box below. I didn't get them in a raffle, not sure why I've got that on there. And I have to keep my favourites, which are from Arquette. Uh, but they're not on my rail. Denim skirts are hugely on trend, but like I mentioned before, I just don't reach for them often enough to warrant keeping it on a really super edited rail. So I'm gonna make my life a little bit easier and save that for spring. These are the distressed cheeky straight jeans, and although I like them, I think they're better in springtime because in the height of winter, those holes in the knees get a little bit drafty. This pair of skinnies are so tiny, I don't know how I ever got in them. I think they need to be donated. Um, nice colour though, it's a shame, they're the All Saints ones. What I will keep though, and I think works nicely against all those tones, is the new favourite cut in grey that I got from And Other Stories. I really like this pair of jeans, I think they've got a great fit and a really nice high quality denim, so they're going to stay in. Now this is the Cezanne Boyfriend jeans. Well, I call them the boyfriend jeans because they're a bit oversized. Um, I do really like them, but I haven't been wearing them very much. So something is obviously bugging me about them subconsciously. And I'm not quite sure yet what it is. I feel like I'm spring cleaning my mind at the same time. Okay, so jeans wise, I've got my Arquette ones upstairs. I've got Everlane in blue, I've got the grey of the stories, and then I've got black, which I've got on, which gives me one, two, eight pairs of trousers, which I think is enough. Uh, but I like those. No, sorry. I'm going to have to go for nine because they are the H&M Capri pants in navy. Okay, nine pairs of trousers. I still haven't found my Christmas Day outfit, so I'm going to keep one nice dress from my collection as a possible for Christmas Day, unless I find something else in the meantime. That is a fan favourite, my lovely pink one that I got from Reese. That's where I should look. They always do lovely dresses, don't they? I might have a look at that today. But if it was a choice between those two, I will go with the black. Lovely white blazer, but definitely the wrong season for that. Why did I keep that in for autumn? I don't think I've worn it at all. This one isn't getting as much use as it did when I originally got it, so I'm gonna keep that one in storage, but not get rid of it, because I think it'd be one of those that comes back round again. I bought nicer scarves recently, so I am finally going to donate that one. So that blush tone one, and then this deep camel tone, well, they call it cider, actually. So then it's on to jackets or blazers. And if you've watched my videos for a while, you'll know I am a big fan of blazers. I love to have a good selection in my capsule wardrobe. However, when it comes to winter, I don't reach for them often enough to keep too many on my rail. It's fine when I'm in the house or for Zoom meetings, but the second I step out the house, I'm yearning for either a jumper or a woolen coat or often both at the same time. So although I love it, I think fabric weight-wise, I'm gonna put this one to one side 
until spring comes around. I'm running out of space here because of all these chunky knits, so I'm just gonna have to move onto this section here. Definitely keeping a nice leather jacket in my capsule wardrobe every season. I'm gonna keep my black blazer and my herringbone blazer because I think they're my two favorites and they're probably most appropriate as it gets a bit colder. I think they will layer really nicely with some of these tones on the rail already. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm actually at 38 pieces which is better than I thought I'd done, really. So I might keep both of those denim jackets. I really like them and I wear them a lot. And I know colour-wise, they are both going to go with a lot of these different outfits. They're not the warmest coat in the world, but I do sometimes layer them with a nice wool coat over the top. And I quite like that look as well. So then I've got this little section here of what I describe as personality pieces, really. They're not following any particular trends, but you love them anyway. And they're what makes your personal style unique. Sometimes I call them statement pieces but really they're just individual styles that I like to have a sprinkle of in my capsule wardrobe. I do like to have this lovely palette of tones in my wardrobe but I don't want it to get boring or stale. So adding in a sprinkle here and there or something a little bit different, I think it then really lifts the whole capsule wardrobe, makes it feel unique, and then it's really suited to your own personal style rather than just trends or just a lovely palette. This dress is from Spirit and Grace, and again, I would wear that day or night. Might save that one till the spring, because I think that will look lovely with bare legs, actually. Now this isn't practical at all, but it's probably my favorite thing in my entire wardrobe. Very pretty, puff sleeve blouse that I got from Suzanne. It's too cold for winter. It's not very easy to lay out a cardigan or a jumper over the top. And yet, I want to keep it in. Does it matter? I don't think it does. That feels good. That feels nice and organized and practical and real life, really. Get these out. As lovely as the box is, I'm gonna keep these out. A bit like my rail, I like to have everything on display so I can easily reach for it or imagine the outfit that I'm putting together on any given morning. And then my new ones from Adelaide in that lovely shade of tan, which again, as you can see, goes with loads. I wish I'd bought two pairs of those. Um, they're the loafers that I got from the White Company. I've worn them so much they look a little bit ruined now. But I'm gonna save those for spring anyway, because my feet will get cold. Personality piece or statement piece. I'm definitely keeping my red shoes. Well, they don't particularly go with a million outfits, but I love them anyway. And I'm gonna keep black ballet flats as well. I hate to admit it because I love the color and this style of boots and knee-high boots are particularly on trend this season. The annoying thing about these is that the leather isn't softening enough around the ankle like you would expect it to after, I don't know, I've had these about a year now. So they are a little bit painful, but I'm happy to suffer for my fashion. So I'm gonna keep them in. I might be in pain wearing them, but as long as they look nice and keep those in as well. That does make it three pairs of ankle boots, but I think they're very different in style to the Fairfax and Favour ones. Obviously they've got a higher heel as well, um, and it is winter, so I'm gonna be wearing boots a lot. If I get a chance before Christmas, I might do a styling my winter capsule wardrobe video. It'd be interesting to see just how many you could make. If I don't get a chance before Christmas, I'll do it afterwards, so keep an eye out for that video. So I've done a quick tally and I've managed to get it to 52 pieces, and that's including scarves, coats and shoes. The only thing missing is handbags. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to edit down my handbags because I do use all of them on rotation. So I've got my bucket bag, a two-tone camel, classic black Palen numero un, a nice tan tote bag, and then a surprise for you. Palen sent me a present, which I felt very lucky to receive. The tote bag in taupe. I fell in love with this one. In fact, I fell in love with them all. I love the color and I don't have a handbag in this shade. And yet I do have an awful lot of neutrals in my wardrobe that it would go with. So I'm very grateful to Palen for sending me such a gorgeous gift. It's come to a happy and very appreciative home. So thank you very much. I've got it to 57 pieces. That's amazing. I think that's the best I've ever done. Perhaps that's the trick. Take the pressure off yourself. Forget about numbers. But it also feels so nicely edited and refined down to those core pieces I know I will wear time and time again that this is just going to make life so much easier on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm choosing an outfit. I'm quite pleased with myself now. It's a big task, I know, to take it on, but I cannot recommend it enough. It feels so much better. As always, I do really hope you've enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful and maybe given you a little bit of inspiration to making your own winter capsule wardrobe. Do let me know in the comment section your favorite pieces I've saved. And also if there's anything I've put into storage that you think, actually Jess, 
I think you should put that back on your rail again. Do let me know your thoughts. Also, don't forget to click the link in the description box below to Pantene's new hair biology range. It's working wonders on my own hair, so I'm imagining it will do the same for all of you too. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you'll join me back here in a couple of days with more styling and outfit ideas. Take care. Right, that's uh, all. Oh. Mm. Jealous. Let me just show them what you just showed me. Waitress, jam, roly-poly. And I'm meant to be on a no-sugar ban. Thanks for that.